the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G after one year. I did the announcement of the A54 yesterday, and we're going to have that one in the house a little bit later in the month, or actually at the beginning of next month in April. But I wanted to go ahead and go over kind of the final, not the final grade, but just kind of give an update on where this particular device is. I'm not going to harp too much on the Exynos stuff because I did that yesterday. I'll link that video at the end of this video. So I don't want to go too much into the disappointment of using an Exynos here. The only thing I'll say is that I don't think it's I don't think it's unfounded because a lot of people who own both this phone and the A52 much prefer the A52. And I think a big portion of that is because of the Snapdragon that powers the A52 as opposed to the A53. But that doesn't mean that there's not things to like here. I can hate this performance. or not hate. I can be disappointed with this performance, but still know that there's a lot to be enjoyed here for people who did pick one up. At this point, I wouldn't recommend it. I know it's... I think $312 on T-Mobile. They're doing a carrier deal. You could pick one up. 50 cents a month, something stupid like that. I know I know. Metro did a bunch of deals on these. So if you got one of these at some point during the year for like 250 bucks, 300 bucks, and you're winning at life, you don't have anything to worry about. This is more than enough phone and then some for what you actually paid. And you know, the only thing that, that really frustrates me about it is I did uh, some tablet reviews for Android Police. I was one of the Lenovo's. And I compared it basically to a car that's going 60 miles an hour, but stops short every few feet, as opposed to a car that's going 30 miles an hour continuously. They might get to the destination at the same time, but one journey was significantly more enjoyable than the other. That's what I think this reminds me of, because it'll accelerate with the 120 hertz refresh rate, with the speed that it wants to have. It'll go 100 miles an hour, Twitter, whatever. You'll be flying along and be really enjoying yourself. And then it'll get caught up on something stupid, like a notification or something, and you'll, you'll feel it. It'll be jarring to you. That's what really holds me back with this. But let's talk about the things that you do get that are quite nice, that if you picked up an A53, something you've enjoyed. The first thing is they have made it better. They have gone along here with software updates and alleviated some of that. It used to be a lot more jarring. It used to lag a heck of a lot more than it does. Running Android 13, One UI 5, I do believe it's slated to get 5.1, but it's One UI 5, so you get all the creature comforts of that and design enhancements, which, which I like. It's one of the better softwares out there at the moment across the board. So you get a, a, that at a price point that's like 300 bucks, which is pretty good. So there's that there. You still get expandable storage. Which, up to a terabyte, micro SD, it, it, and it fills in a nice little slot where it uses the backside of the SIM card tray, basically, for your micro uh, SD card slot. And people jump up and down, you know, that they won't buy another device that doesn't have micro SD. Well, 300 bucks, you know, you if you're coming from something that's a lot older now, if you're coming from a Note 9, if you're coming from, let's say, an, an S8, something like that, you're going to get similar performance. You're going to get all the creature comforts of 120 hertz and a nice display and all the rest of it. You're going to get the camera updates, but you're also, and you're going to get the new software, but you're also going to be able to maintain a micro SD card slot. And I really do believe that this Samsung level of device is probably going to be the last or one of the last, or, or I guess highest performance device you could go to that's still going to have a micro SD card slot. They're going away. You're not going to find them on the flagship level uh, for a while, unless it becomes a, a groundswell of, of protest or something like that, that people just absolutely want to have it. Then you might see manufacturers go back to them, but I, I don't see that happening. They want you to, to invest in their cloud storage or whatever service they happen to have. So that's going to be the days of that are over. So something like this, the A53 or the A54, which we'll compare this to, are going to be kind of the top of the line device you're going to get with a micro SD card slot. Fingerprint sensor is nice. In display, works well. Screen is good. 1080p, but you do get the 120 hertz. And yeah, it's snappy, it's fast, it's enjoyable when it works. Uh, or when the processor is able to push that 120 hertz. But usually, it, it's like an old person. You know, once you get it going a little bit, once you once you crack those ligaments from the <laughs> whatever and, and get them moving, it, it kind of goes in the right direction. So once you get over the initial uh, kind of wave of clearing whatever notifications you've gotten or something like that, then you know, see, look at this scroll of Instagram is really nice right now. This is this is good, and you'll be and you'll be going along, and you'll be able to enjoy it. So that, to me, 
is quite good. No headphone jack, of course, but that's something that uh, you can only get on really like the budget of the budget devices at this point. But I do like the design. I do like the flat display. I think that I know a lot of people say, but you know, we're not in the in the flagship territory right now. So the main pushback I get on people when I talk about how much I like a flat glass display, they say, well, it doesn't feel premium. It doesn't feel like a flagship. Well, this isn't. This is 300 bucks. So that criticism I don't think is valid at this level because you're getting a budget device, essentially, or a mid-tier device. So I like the flat display for that. It just feels better to me. And you could still have it. And people say, well, swipe up from the bottom of the screen. Well, you know, there are ways to get around that with a flat display. Windows Phone did it years ago where we showed this on another video, where basically they curved the glass down into the bezel a little bit so it still feels premium when you're flicking up. This isn't the case on this Samsung, but there are ways around getting that premium feel with a flat display that manufacturers could use in the future. But overall, you get the computational stuff in the Samsung cameras. You get multiple lenses back here, which is nice. People like that flexibility and versatility taking their shots. So, like I said, if, you, if you're somebody who... Because I, I've been really harsh on this device. And, and like I said, it's, it's just because of the expectations that I set on it. But if you're somebody who got it for a carrier deal, you're paying, you signed up for T-Mobile, it's like 50 cents for 24 months or zero at one point, or 250 bucks straight away unlocked or 300 bucks unlocked, then you're fine. Especially, you know, if you're not a Pixel person, I, I'd still probably, at 299 I'd still probably take the Pixel 6a over something like this because of the performance difference. But if you need that 120 hertz, if you need the expandable storage, if you like the Samsung panels, and this is a beautiful one, if you like the big advantage, which is the software, One UI 5.0 on Android 13, and all the stuff that that provides, is just, I think, the best design overall of Android in the game right now, then you're, there are advantages here. There are positives here. There are reasons why you'd still want to pick this up despite the frustration of the performance not being exactly what we would have wanted. So that's basically what, I, not to say this is a clarification video of yesterday's video, I still believe that Samsung with the A54 has to do better in terms of the smoothness of the whole user experience. But I just wanted to come back and say that this isn't, wasn't a complete loss. It wasn't a complete wash, the A53. And if you have one, there are plenty of reasons why you enjoy it. And if the A54 is not to your liking, or you're not really looking to spend 450 bucks, if you don't want to spend the entire 450 bucks, and you're still able to sell this for 300 bucks or something like that, or even 250 when the A54 comes out, or when I do the review, do the comparison, the performance is comparable, the same, but you want in that Samsung ecosystem, the Samsung experience, perhaps you want to pair it with a Galaxy Watch or something like that, or some Galaxy Buds, then this could be a nice... I don't want to say entry level, but nice budget to mid range. That's going to be a decent enough performer with some of the creature comforts of a flagship device that comes at a decent price where it makes it worth it. Would I like this at 450 bucks? No, I didn't. Would I like it at 300? Yeah, it becomes a lot more attractive when you're talking about that price. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve Delicious day.